Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about kidney disease in dogs. We're going to be discussing the causes for this and also going over the prescription diets like Royal Canine that vets put dogs on after they show kidney problems and kidney stones and other symptoms of kidney disease. This is mainly going to focus on dogs, but of course this does also apply to cats, which we will be talking about in this video as well. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos about pets. Before I get started with today's video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to five strand allergy testing. Now, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you are concerned about what you're feeding your pet. Now, it doesn't matter what you feed your pet, how expensive the food is, or any of that, if your pet is allergic to the food you are feeding them. Now, unfortunately, pets can't tell us what makes their tummy hurt, but luckily that's where five strand allergy test comes in. You can take a hair sample of your dog and send it in to them, for testing. All the information will be linked down below as well as a coupon code to use when you get your own test. These aren't just for dogs, they're also for humans, horses, cats, and dogs. <laughs> Kidney disease in dogs and cats is something that is very common and something that we're actually starting to see a lot more of. And this includes uh, kidney stones and just anything kidney related, such as bladder stones and UTIs and even kidney failure, which does result in death. Now, one of the questions I get the most often when I do these types of videos is, what are your qualifications to be talking about this? Well, my ability to read. Basically, this information is available to anyone. I just really like talking about this. I like focusing on these issues. And so I create these videos after I have read a lot of articles and done a lot of research on it and talked to a lot of people. So basically, all of this information is out there for you guys. And I think it's important to realize um, the same way that we have this syndrome of treating doctors like they're gods. That's what's happening in the pet industry and we're treating vets like they're gods and they're not. And so if you want to get a hold of this information, all of the links and everything is gonna be linked down below. I have several different sources that I've gone through for this particular video. You do not need to have a doctorate degree or be a vet in order to read a science journal. Anybody that has the ability to read can access this information and people are making money off of your pets because you're unaware of the facts. So we're gonna be talking about kidney disease in dogs and cats and the science and logic behind prescription diets for these issues. So let me start off by first explaining what the kidneys do. Kidneys are basically the filtration system of our body. They clean our blood and remove salt, toxins, and waste from the body. Waste is removed in urine. In order to do this and to function properly, we need to drink a lot of water to keep our kidneys healthy. Now, based on research done on humans, we understand several ways in which kidney problems can develop based on habits. Kidney disease is something very common and any medical professional can tell you the basic requirements to keep your kidneys healthy. Two of the most common factors contributing to kidney disease is weight and diet. So let's talk about diet. Like I mentioned, water is super important and in order to make sure that your kidneys can stay healthy and function, you need to drink a lot of water. Now, most of us don't drink a lot of water and it can be something that's difficult to remember and make a habit of. So considering how difficult it is for humans, it's basically impossible to explain to your dog that they need to drink more water. And so naturally, these animals would get a lot of their moisture from food. And so it's really important to make sure that your dogs do get a lot of their moisture from their food. And so it is important to keep in mind that kibble does have typically about 10% moisture. And let's continue talking about diet. High blood sugar levels can cause kidney damage. Your kidneys have to work extra hard to filter glucose out of your bloodstream. Kibble is very high in carbohydrates and makes your dog gain weight easily and have high blood sugar levels. Now, your dog doesn't even need to be diabetic. High blood sugar levels over many years can lead to kidney damage. Now, if your dog is overweight, lack of exercise, lots of food, we do know that high blood pressure is something that is very common with being overweight. So with the constant high blood pressure levels as well, this can also contribute to kidney damage. Cats are actually twice as likely to develop kidney problems compared to dogs 
and dogs are more often affected by kidney problems than humans. What we do know about cats is that they do have a very low thirst drive. And this is usually for two reasons. One, cats do actually get most of their moisture from their food. So from killing prey and things like that out in the wild, that's usually where they're gonna get a lot of their water. Now, the other reason that they do have a low thirst drive is because cats don't like drinking from standing water. And this is because disease presence is more common in standing water. So cats actually like to drink from moving bodies of water. So a standing dish of water won't get your cats to drink a lot of water. Now add a kibble diet on top of that and we can really see how those kidneys are actually being damaged very severely over several years of having these habits. And then let's talk about the evidence linking kibble to kidney disease. High starch diets lead to crystal formations in urine, while high protein diets increase the dissolve of crystals. This means that if your pet is eating a diet of 70% corn or other grains, they are very prone to developing crystals. If your pet is eating 70% meat, crystals will dissolve before they become an issue. And then some pet food companies have added acidifying products to their food to combat this issue. However, these products lead to calcium stones which again cause kidney failure. So do hold on to that last piece of information because it will be important later on in the video. Besides needing a high protein diet in order to be less likely to develop crystals and kidney stones, dogs and cats also need a high protein diet for the correct vitamin absorption. Meat is a concentrated source of vitamin A, E, and D, and B12 is only found in animal products. And it is believed that diets high in processed carbohydrates create a vitamin C deficiency. Recent studies suggest that high carbohydrate diets might actually reduce the absorption of vitamins found in meats, making your dog vitamin deficient. So kibble would therefore not be a balanced diet, contrary to what most people claim it to be. Mold is also a big problem seen in pet foods. Of course, pet food does not need to pass the same inspection that human grade food does. The FDA advises you to not handle kibble directly with your hands because it can be very unsanitary carrying molds and salmonella. In a recent study, mold was found in 40% of 17 brands of dry pet food. This shouldn't be surprising because kibble is composed of waste product, both meats and vegetables that have gone moldy and are no longer fit for human consumption. Something to remember when the argument of raw diet turns into how it's so dangerous with germs and mold does greatly affect kidney function. Now we all know that our doctor is constantly asking us to drink more water and eat less salt and that's because it does affect kidney function. So the kidneys do have to actually clean salt out of our bodies. Now, so it's important to remember that dog food does contain 1% of salt. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but next time you read the ingredients on a bag of dog food, remember that everything after salt is less than 1%. So you're giving your dog more salt than those healthy ingredients that made you want to buy the food like cranberries, carrots, or added vitamins. When you look at the ingredients on a bag of dog food, you can see that it does have a lot of chemicals. These chemicals are preservatives and colorants used for anti-caking, curing, drying, firming, texture, and more. All of these chemicals have to be cleaned out by the kidneys. Now with all of that knowledge and a better understanding of what kidneys do and what harms them, let's take a look at prescription diets. So now we know that water is one of the most important factors. We know that blood sugar and blood pressure have to be controlled and we know that cutting down on carbs is a must while increasing protein. So that brings us to prescription diets and we need to consider how prescription diets are going to help us maintain all of those things that we just talked about. Let's look at the most commonly prescribed prescription diets for kidney disease. The first one I'm gonna be looking at is Royal Canine and Veterinary Diet Renal Support F Dry Dog Food. So this is what it claims. Formulated for renal health, energy dense, kidney health with fish oils, low phosphorus levels, and targeted protein. So let's break it down. Uh, formulated for renal health and kidney health. With only 10% of moisture, that's a really big claim to make. Energy dense, that means this is gonna put weight on your dog. Now it is common that dogs that do have kidney disease will lose weight when they're experiencing the symptoms of kidney disease. So sometimes you do want to increase their weight, but you don't wanna pack the pounds on 
And I will say, I have actually seen a lot of dogs that are overweight and do have kidney disease. So this energy dense is gonna put weight on them and that's probably something you don't want. If you add up the guaranteed analysis on this food, you get 66.6%. So that means that they are not telling you what 33% of this food is. The protein is between 11 and 15%, so that's very low in protein, and carbohydrates are probably the missing 33%. So basically, energy dense translates to it's going to make your dog fat, which we can see when the very first two ingredients are rice and corn, followed by chicken fat, which really doesn't even count as a protein. Overall, this food has very little animal protein, and from the research we just did, we know that it's important for them to have a diet that is high in protein. So the term target protein is really a straight out lie on their marketing. Fish oil, it does have fish oil, but no guaranteed analysis on omega-3s. So that's not a good claim to make. Uh, low phosphorus levels, that's good. Uh, it's really the only positive thing that we can say about this food because uh, the next ingredient is actually very problematic. Uh, remember we talked about dog food companies that are adding acidifiers to the food in order to break down the crystals. Uh, the process of this is actually forming kidney stones. So basically, yeah, you, you take your dog in because they're having problems urinating. It turns out that they're diagnosed with these crystals and the vet's gonna have to try to flush them out, which can be painful or do surgery. So the option is, uh, the less expensive option is to buy very expensive food, which is royal canine, which is going to break down these crystals and yes, that's going to work. And your dog's gonna go home, eat this food, and I don't know how long they tell you, I think it's like two weeks or so, and they're gonna go back in and those crystals will have dissolved. And so yes, you did take care of that problem, but at what cost? What's happening now is that this food is forming kidney stones, which is a bigger problem than what you started with. And the ingredient for that is uh, D-I-methylene, if I'm saying that right, I'm gonna put it here on the screen in case I'm not. And that's uh, the ingredient that you can look for in these prescription diets. So I don't, I don't know what else can be said um, for people to realize that this food is not helping their pets. It is showing you some immediate satisfaction, some immediate results, but this food is not good for them and it is terrible for the condition that they're currently in. So next we're going to look at Hill's prescription diet KD kidney care with uh, chicken dry dog food. So what they claim is protects vital kidney and heart function, supports the natural ability to build lean muscle daily, enhance appetite triggers, made with controlled phosphorus and low sodium, plus therapeutic levels of omega-3 fatty acids also uh, higher levels of amino acids made in the USA clinically tested. Again, it's difficult to claim that you are protecting kidney function when you're not even listing how much moisture your food has. So this one's probably under 10%. And then on top of that does have a chemical compound that research is showing does make kidney stones. So the same DI methylene, which was in the first food. Um, and the protein levels are 12%. So this is not going to build lean muscle. Uh, fish oil, uh, again, doesn't show any omega-3 oils. The ingredients on this food are actually better than Royal Canine because uh, this one at least does have chicken, which Royal Canine only had chicken byproduct. But this food is still full of carbohydrates, corn gluten meal, rice, grain, barley, clinically tested, uh, what does that even mean? It's like these kibble companies are completely going against science when they're doing these supposed clinical testing, because uh, clearly this is something that is going to increase kidney disease in dogs. So in conclusion, these prescription diets that are being recommended by vets for your dog's uh, kidney problems are in fact not helping the dog and potentially making the situation a lot worse. Again, it's something that is immediate results with long-term costs. Now, after I tell people this, I often hear, oh, wow, I'm gonna to talk to my vet about this and ask what they recommend as far as raw diets go. And that's where you're like, oh. I just explained this whole entire thing about how they're recommending the wrong thing and then you think they're gonna suddenly change their mind and recommend something different. 
It doesn't work like that, obviously. Um, most vets are going to tell you, no, uh, raw diet's going to hurt your dog. Um, raw, they can't handle raw meat. Um, it's going to make them sick. Uh, on and on and on. It is like hitting your head against a wall. Your vet is going to scare you out of raw diets. They are going to talk you out of cooking food for your dog. They're going to talk you into buying prescription diets and that's just the way that it goes. Your vet is not God. You don't need to trust me. You don't need to trust your vet. Do the research for yourself. Go out there, do the reading. Uh, look into other popular vets online that are starting to talk about these issues because not all vets will. And I, I've made videos before in the past about why this is and it's, uh, you know, because these companies are funding vet schools, they're funding uh, veterinary offices by providing them incentives to sell these foods. It just really goes into money and also vets not having the education needed in order to know these things. But the truth is out there and People are talking about it more and it's going to start becoming a bigger deal and more commonly talked about. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to pass this on to somebody else who is feeding Royal Canine. Royal Canine is the worst thing that has happened to the pet industry, one of the worst things, and so we need to spread this message. So thank you guys so much for watching. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I'll see you next time. Bye.